In the fields of carving and sculpture, particular attention is paid to grain and color as these features play an important role in determining the expressive qualities of the final object. However, precise technical criteria must also be met. Wood intended to be made into a mask, for example, should have a fine grain that will not split in order that the contours of the mouth and eyes can be carved with extreme precision. Since an actor wears the mask for quite a long time, it must also be light. These exigencies present a contradiction, however, because solid wood with a fine grain is usually heavy, and light wood does not allow for detailed carving. Polonia is a light wood and is therefore appreciated as material for masks. But the contours of the eyes and the lips cannot be carved as precisely as with camphor wood. The latter wood, however, is relatively heavy. A third wood species, Hinoki cypress, particularly Bisu Hinoki from the Kiso area, offers a fair compromise. Although it can, under certain circumstances, split easily. It is very suitable for carving. According to Muko Oshi Uuboku, wood destined to become a Buddhist sculpture is called misogi. The main wood species used for this purpose are Japanese camphor wood, hinoki cypress, and Japanese nutmeg, although other wood species such as katsura or cherry may also be used. As has been previously mentioned, a tree struck by lightning or growing on a sacred area may be selected as well. The criterion governing wood selection, in this case, seems to be mainly religious in nature. Magemono, or bentwork artifacts, are everyday objects and are made primarily of local softwoods, which are easy to split. 
In the Kiso area Hinoki Cypress, Japanese Thuya and Sawara Cypress form the main materials used in the manufacture of bento or lunch boxes. Soichi Tsuchikawa explains that the superiority of the Hinoki Cypress is due to the fact that it does not expand or shrink, whereas the other species warp easily. This is an important wood selection criterion as the lunchboxes are to be coated with Japanese lacquer, a process that demands a very stable wood. Sourus cypress is mainly used for the bottom of the lunchboxes. Japanese thuya is the species that split best but its brownish color is not appreciated. In the north of Honsu, notably in Akita Prefecture, the main species used for bending are Akita cedar, and a variety of Heba arborvitae. Akita cedar is used uncoated, whereas Heba is used for lacquered boxes. The provenance of the wood, its intended use, its cleavability, and its price are the main criteria governing what wood will be used to make these everyday artifacts. Aesthetic criteria may play a secondary role, however, especially when the finished surface is to be left in an uncoated state. Daiku or carpenters tend to use local wood for construction. Hirose Takauki, who works in the Kuoto area, uses Japanese cedar, Hinoki cypress, pine, Japanese fir, Hiba arborvitae, cherry, white leaf Japanese magnolia and persimmon. He uses Japanese cedar for posts in Japanese style rooms. He wants to show the beauty of the cedar grain. He also uses Hinoki cypress for posts and for sills. For sills he also uses Heba arborvitae. The wood used for sills has to be decay resistant. He uses cherry for sliding door sills because it makes the doors slide more easily. Cherry is hard and hardly ever wears out. White leaf Japanese magnolia is used for western style broom doors. He uses persimmon for the alcove post. In the field of carpentry, the wood selection is governed chiefly by such economic and technical criteria as durability, strength, and resistance to decay and warping. Aesthetic criteria, however, are also taken into consideration when choosing wood for Japanese style rooms, where aesthetic considerations play an important role. When a carpenter buys a wood species, he bases his choice on the wood's intended use and the properties required. When he cuts the wood and decides the place where it will be used, he takes note of the color and grain of the timber. According to Hirose Takauki, the balance between all factors is important, in addition to the choice of timber mentioned previously, in the following sections. Two crucial woodworking manufacturing processes remaining are its seasoning and object-oriented cutting will be discussed as well.